so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, Derek, how was your week, man? Man, my week is uh, fabulous, brothers. Um, I'm here. I finally made it back to the gym since 2019, man. 2019? 2019 is the last time I was in the gym, man. You know? Um, Damn. Yeah, it's been a while. And you know how it is. You, you, you know, you, you're women of a certain age. You know, we have to take care of ourselves. And you make all sorts of promises to yourself, man, especially around the new year. Mm-hmm. So it was good to at least get that first step out of the way, and it was rough, man. Let me tell you, it was rough, mm-hmm. but um, but um, but it was a win because I went. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, um, yeah, so yeah. Was, yeah. It was, you got hey, hey I, I put it like this: it was better than this time last year. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> I wasn't doing anything. That's so, true. Um, That's so true. yeah. So so I looked at it at that, man. It was a win. And other than that, I'm blessed, brothers. You know, good health, good spirits, man. And I'm here again, man. Enjoying my time, y'all. What's what's up? My man Kelvin, what's going on, brother? How was your week, man? Everything was good, man. Just uh, waiting for some warm weather to finally hit the tri-state area because this is, uh, you know, uh, enough already with the cold weather, uh, especially because it, it seems to fluctuate, you know. But um, I'm really appreciative today because I realized this month marks two years that my nephew is going into the Air Force, and that's why I'm wearing my proud Air Force yeah. Uncle shirt, you know. <laughs> but when you see how proud I am that my nephew is <laughs> in, the, in the Air Force, That's you know, and, and I'm, I'm so proud that I will periodically through the show just be showing people this <laughs> that me join in or tune in a little later, you know. <laughs> but I'm, just, I'm really, really glad for that, man. <laughs> you know. But no, yeah, so everything is good, man. Good, you man. know what makes me feel good? What's to that, bro? be around you brothers. I'm telling you, there's nobody else in the business I will work with than you guys. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> Yo. That's I, good. I appreciate it. Kelvin, I agree 100% with, uh, with you. I, I love being around me, too. You know, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty great, right? <laughs> I'm freaking, I'm pretty freaking awesome to be around. Yeah, you know? hey, listen, remember, you. remember, Snoop Dogg got that walk uh, on the Walk of Fame. He thanked himself. So I mean, yeah. you gotta, you know, you yeah. gotta give, you, you gotta give yourself some flowers sometimes. So, like, you gotta love yourself. You yeah, gotta man. love yourself first. No doubt, real. no question. Yep, two things I do: love myself and pay myself first before I pay my bills. That's, that's, something that that's important. Before. Yeah, you gotta you know? pay yourself first. <laughs> And that's yeah, my, messed me up. I still owe myself. But well, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> my 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 week is kind of it was kind of interesting. I mean, I went down uh, and got the the vaccine. I know some people who, like don't get the vaccine, but everybody's situation is different, you know. So yeah. people like you know my own my homeboys. His wife has lupus, so before he's on some things, and this I can't bring this virus home to my wife to take out. For those who don't know, my mother's going through uh, about to have a breast cancer procedure on Wednesday. So we had to say my mother's immune system is going to be changed up a little bit, compromised. So we all decided in my family that we're going to go and get vaccinated. So I went on I went on Tuesday. I mean, for people don't know, I went to York College. And they got the Pfizer one. And and what it is, when you, if you haven't got it yet, and I have, I'm on blood thinners too. So it gave me a bruise my arm. I felt like chicken wing. Chicken wing went too. So chicken okay. wing. And he was debating. I was like, listen, wing. They, they gave chicken wing a shot in the good arm or the bad arm? No, I told him because first we're going to get in his, his good arm. I said, no, you got to get in the little baby arm. So okay. when they get when they went to the baby arm, the needle almost went all the way through because little his little arm. Like, <laughs> so it almost hit him in the ribs. But not, so, you know, so. And this so is where I kill Kelvin. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need that trade ball slowly, brother. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, so I got the. So then the next day, though, for me, I had the bruise and my arm was sore. But man, I had I went back. I felt like I went back into 2020 when I was very sick. I had the fever, went into 102. I had to wrap up in uh, the hoodie, two hoodies, sweatpants, heater. It was crazy. So that was a, that was a little tripped out, little tripped out a couple of days there, you know. So, yeah. so you had you had a little bit of um, side effects from the shot. Yeah, because also that um, um, that said because I had to have the antibodies still. So okay. A person like me to have the antibodies is going to kick in real fast and it's going to jump. So it jump start real fast, and it happened. It jump start real fast. It started going to attack mode, and I was down out for about a little over six hours or so, something like that. So, wow. I'm, all right. I'm all right now, though. You know, I'm it's good. You made the right decision, man. It's it's you know, anything that that will protect your mom, man, and um, just yeah. know that we're all uh, praying for and thinking about us. So, you absolutely, know, we all have your absolutely. back. Absolutely. Appreciate you know? it. And next yeah, week, I'll wear some pink for the Tatas, baby. You know, I got to yeah. represent for the Tatas. Yo, we're here for you, D. So anything you need, you let us know. We're here for you. Appreciate it. I know y'all are, man. I know y'all are, man. So it was, it was it was interesting, man. Then um, you know, end of the week, um, yesterday, I got a little lifted off of one of my homeboys' products. And I was a little <laughs> I was a little wasted last night, but it was, but I slept very well. I'd have I did one thing getting wasted like that on the natural stuff, you don't you sleep through the night. You don't have to get up and do the yeah. old man three o'clock in the morning pee. 
No, you don't, you don't pee at all. You sleep right through the night. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Glad yeah. glad it seemed to work better when it's hot. Yeah. Or <laughs> if you get too relaxed, you might pee in the bed. But you yeah. you know, you you're gonna get some good sleep though. Yeah, yeah. So you know, yeah. it's just it's interesting. It's very interesting. So like <laughs> it's um I don't know if you guys saw this, right? LeBron James, you know, he well, we all know LeBron is LeBron's very vocal. He's I gotta say one in the, he is now the Muhammad Ali, the Jim Brown, he's in that he's in that category now of black athletes taking charge of uh, political issues and stuff in their community. They had this one soccer player, I forgot it, I can't pronounce his name, what is it? Something, is that, yeah. whatever name, the guy spoke up to LeBron. It's it, 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 Bertrand or something some like some that. Like Bertrand Bertrand and Bramovich. Yeah, yeah. something, yeah, there it is, there it is. And he tried to tell, tell LeBron to just basically shut up and play. Yeah. Well, he he said <laughs> no. I think no. He said stick to sports. Stick to right? sports. Same shit. Yeah. Stick to sports. Shut up and dribble. Same shit. Yeah. It's all in the same realm. Stick mm -hmm. to sports. He said athletes should be athletes, and um, athletes unite the world, and politics divide the world. I think that was the yep. his actual quote that's he it, made. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, can I get my opinion on it? Of course. Break it down. Well, the, um, the, he's a soccer player, right? Yes, football. Okay, F yeah, football in some <laughs> countries, <laughs> soccer, soccer in other countries. Yeah. Um, he's he's Swedish, if I'm not mistaken. Swedish or Hungarian? I don't know. Some European okay. shit. Some European. All right, but the bottom line is he ain't he ain't black, but he's telling another. He's telling yeah, he's black telling, man he's telling what to do. Yeah, what to do. Yep. He want to tell a black man what to do in his position, a black man that has a huge platform to be able to express himself and maybe help his own people and speak up about injustices, right? Mm -hmm. So here's a soccer player that's going to make a comment about LeBron James that has not walked in LeBron James' shoes, doesn't have to deal with the injustices that LeBron James' people have to deal with, but he's going to make a comment and just basically tell him that he should keep quiet and just be an athlete. Mm -hmm. I just I, I think that's disrespectful in my opinion. He should keep his mouth shut. That's my opinion on it. He, he, yeah. he should. Uh, he should. He should, but he's not, you know, and that's yeah, you know, we, yeah. we've dealt with this before. You know, it, he comes from a very privileged uh, place, you know, in comparison. And, yeah. um, you know, and, it, and what it is, is, you know, we he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to relate. You know, that's just the reality. They don't have to relate. They get to speak. or He gets to speak. Um, he can't relate. He can't. Well, he, relate. Can. he doesn't have to. Yeah. And he doesn't have to. He can speak. And that's just where he comes from, because his world is completely different. His world. Yeah. And, he, and, and he's right. You know, to a degree, you know. I do believe I do agree that sports does uh, unite us and um, and and politics divides us, but it's not his place, and he doesn't and he doesn't understand what's happening. You know, right. yeah, uh, you know what? Yeah. I'm sorry, Derek. Uh, let me say this about the sports uniting us. Sports to me doesn't unite us. What sports mm. does is it's a diversionary tactic. So you know, I've been called the N word by Yankee fans. And stuff yeah. like that. And I'm a Yankee fan. That's not uniting right. us. All it is, mm -hmm. is people just find it a commonality, but that's not mm -hmm. uniting us. Well, you know what I mean? Yeah. And I think I, I get I get your point, but you know what I'm saying? No words. What I try to say is some people try to sneak sleep, you know, sneak some cold stuff in there. See, yeah. this is the reality. To me, black people, my father said he taught me you can say whatever you want as long as it's the truth. And Correct. so we have a people who haven't had a voice. We have a people that haven't had a platform. I bet you if LeBron James was talking about saving the whales and feeding the cats and oh, doing stuff with dogs, yeah, he'd have yeah. no problem with that. That's yeah, the issue. Yeah. It's just when it comes to us. So LeBron James, who is a, a brand who companies would like to exploit his brand and all the different things, Correct. he should That's take okay. a moment to say yeah. right. He should take a moment to say things that will help his people, just right. like Muhammad Ali did when he took his fights over overseas into Africa and things like that. So I think it's a um a great responsibility. And two um. Uh, Rod's point, some stuff is just mind your business. Some stuff is just, it has nothing to do with you. So what you yeah. do is you tell your fan base, you know, what makes them feel good, and he'll tell his community and fan base what they need to hear. And sometimes yeah, what you need to hear is more important than what you want to hear. So yep. I'm just really tired of people weighing in on other people's matters. This is LeBron James, and he is one of the, the, the most recognizable athletes in the world, and I think he should let people know it shine a light on some injustices that we've had to deal with every generation. It's sad that every generation black people have got this, especially black athletes have had to address things because we're still dealing with the same nonsense that we've been dealing with in our history in this country. Yeah. And the thing, yeah. I, the thing I love well you what you said, well Kelvin, like, you know, it's always been sports has always been a distraction. The Greeks mm -hmm. used to use their, where they politics was fucked up. They gave them the games, right? They go out there, they run, they, they, you know, they had the, the, the gladiators and fighting because people was entertained. It always is a distraction. Another thing that this, this dude needs to realize 
LeBron is he could go in there Coca Cola and those people are like listen y'all have the power y'all you you fund these politicians and y'all want me to sell your products because when I when I say I'm I drink Coke everybody goes out and buy Coke so mm-hmm. I'm gonna use my my celebrity and my power to address these issues and Correct. so like I said this guy needed to stay the same person I, I believe got involved in the politics in his country but it, it was because it affected him and his people but now right. he don't understand how it affects right. our people right. Right. they think they think black people got it sweet. We don't have a suite in any place we go to. Maybe right. except for the motherland. Not right. even there, you know? man. You know, <laughs> no. that's that, that's sold off in, in pieces yeah. and pieces. You know what I mean? We catch hell. Yeah. Even can you imagine that, man. You know, catching hell right there in your own home, man. Yeah. You know, the colonization. Yeah. So yeah. yeah, no, he could definitely fall back on that. Yeah, and yeah. I, yeah. And for the record, I have you know, I was I was out of some I was boycotting uh football before it became a thing with Colin Kaepernick because I do mm. to, to Kelvin's point. I do recognize and I always recognize that it was a distraction. All the sports were. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. So I mean I get it. You know what I mean? But you know, it's, it's yeah. whatever. But it does, you know, it, it does it, it, it's it's a it's a it allows me to have conversation with people that I, you know, wouldn't normally have anything uh to talk about yeah. with. Yeah. You know, so yeah. just to just to piggyback off what Kelvin said, you know, because the thing is, yes, yeah, sports sports don't always unite us because when we went to the Colin Kaepernick thing, it divided us pretty much. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, when people picked a side, people yeah. said that, hey, he shouldn't be doing this. You know, people had talking points and they, they put out the rhetoric and said, oh, he's disrespecting the country, which which is not the case. But like you said, it it, it doesn't bring us together in all cases. There are some cases it does. But yeah, I'm going to say time is temporary until the game is over. Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Man, and that's the thing. When you say t- separate politics from sports, then don't wear don't bring the flag to the games. Don't yes, play the national right. anthem at the so games. Right. Correct. Don't bring in any kind of military commercials Correct. and all the other bullshit. Leave it all out the games. And another totally. thing, you just can't don't... pick and choose when they have politics in the sports. And and what else do they do when they have um politicians in the in the stands or audience? What do they do? They show them, they announce yeah. them or whatever. But then why we yeah, you, they have presidents throwing out first pitches. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. That's right. 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 So leave yeah. it all yeah. out the game, you know? Leave oh, it all the way yeah. out the game. So it's 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 the BS, man, you know. Yeah, he it's, doesn't know. This is but, like I said. This is a Swedish guy trying to talk to what he's talking about. Yeah, I'm sorry, bro. We went out for a little bit, but you know. Any, but since we're on the topic of politics, right? We got this. Uh, the CPAP happened uh, a few days ago, and they rolled out this big golden uh, sta- uh, statue, or whatever the hell you want to call it, of Donald Trump. <laughs> and they celebrate this dude like um, Kelvin. You you know the Bible better. I mean like the little the gold cow, or whatever. Like they rolled this fat, bastard ass cow. Donald Trump <laughs> wearing flip flops, I think, and shorts and dumb shit. And, yeah. So, <laughs> what, what are you guys' thoughts on that bullshit? That you know, man. I you know, think, you know what? Go ahead. Go ahead, Kelvin. You go. You go. I, I just think like this. I I don't. You know, I, the way I was raised doesn't lend itself to following someone like a cult figure like that. And um. I never found Trump to be uh, exceptional. I never found him to be extremely intelligent. Those of us who who have been around New York our entire lives, we know what type of shysty person he is. I just am amazed that people in certain parts of this country think he's the most brilliant person they've ever seen. And the reality of it is, it's just an ideology. He just represents. He just like like one of my friends said, he just tapped into a, a, a vein that people really, really was looking for a face to put to white supremacy and a lot of different things. So that's what it is. Um, to me, uh, to Dee's point, I do think it's like idol worship. It seems like idolatry. It just seems like you're elevating a person when they're infallible. And um, they treat him like a deity, and he's not, and there's something wrong with that. But mm-hmm. let me tell you something. Uh, racism is one of the, the, the strongest, most potent realities I've ever seen in my life. There is there, there is some point, points of racism that is no different then when slavery was going on, it has not dissipated. Tech, we've made technological advances. We've made social advances. When it comes to racism, there's some people that feel exactly the way they felt when they were flying the Confederate flag, which they was just flying it on January 6th, actually. So, I mean, it just it's amazing how it doesn't stop. Yeah, you're right. And Derek, yeah. Rod, yeah. Mike? Yeah, I, I, will, I will say that um, the, 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 the ironic thing about it to me um, is that I believe that the, the idol was made in China. Correct. You know what I mean? And and the artist was Mexican. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, man. A gentleman named uh, Jose Mauricio Mendoza was man. the artist. Wow. All right. 
So these are the people that he would actually, um, I don't know, man, just campaign, campaign against or just be against in every single way. You know what I mean? So it's just kind of interesting to, 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 to put that out there and understand, like, and let that marinate for a minute. Like, you know, his, 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 his base, they don't, they don't care about anything that they really say they care about. You know, it's just something, it's just, you know, in terms of, like, they just want, they just want to create chaos, I, I believe. You know, I believe he's just like a, a agent. I believe Trump is really just an agent of chaos, man. I think that that's uh, what what his whole purpose is. Um, and I, I don't, I, I can't, maybe it's just me trying to make sense of him, of, of how he happened. You know, I've gone back and forth with that. With very, I'm, I'm a big conspiracy nut, right? I don't go into it here in, on this on this show, you know what I mean? I used to keep my wife up with it, you know what I mean? <laughs> I had to let it so we go. Right. But, I, but, you know, but one of my things is, you know, I'm, I'm not, you know, and we've had conversations, you know, is, you know, you hear people talking about is, a, is, 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 is the president elected or is he selected? You know what I mean? So it's just kind of like maybe it's me just trying to make sense of it all. You know, maybe there's someone behind there just putting him in place and just causing just to cause chaos, just to wipe away what was else to start something new. I don't know what's going on. But I agree with you, Derek. Yeah. It's bigger than him. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 But it's just so much. It's just so much. It's just so. It's just so chaotic and just so I I illogical that there's got to be a plan to it, you know. So Definitely. I just, Definitely. I just leave it alone with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. I, I, I'm going to piggyback off you guys. What you say? The thing is, like I said this before, Trump taps into your resentments and your grievances, right? And the thing is, like Kelvin said about how powerful racism is. Racism is more powerful than people's common sense. So the thing is, Trump is creating like this cult following. And that was his goal from day one. You know what I'm saying? He taps into people who are not that bright, you know, and he keeps spewing nonsense to them. And they just they want things to be the way he says it's going to be so bad that they're just not even using common sense at all. They're not even thinking. So the thing is, like, they got this thing. They had this thing that supposed to be on March 4th. Like he was supposed to take power again. March fourth yeah. is coming past. He still has some old, power. old bullshit. They back said when we were having the inauguration that he was going to. Yeah, and the thing is, like they just keep hoping for him to gain power again, and it's not gonna. Have, it's not gonna be the president again. Right. But like I said, their 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 belief in 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 the stuff that he is spewing, the racism, the separation, and all that. He he doesn't. He, they're not using their common sense at all, and that's why he's able to penetrate them because they're just not. They're just not. They're not thinking. Oh yeah, yeah. I agree. I agree. yeah so and then um and then the other thing with it um the QAnon like QAnon. Uh, when do y'all think they're gonna be quiet? Never, <laughs> never, man. They're getting too much press, man. You know, and um and I, you know the whole QAnon movement um. It's just getting too much press. I think it just kind of feeds into itself. It feeds into hubris. I think there's hubris involved now, mm. you know, um, and it's just, you know, I think that they would like, they are almost like its own entity and they will do anything just to make themselves relevant, to keep it relevant. You know what I mean? Because people are eating off it now at, at this point. Mm. You know, people have entire YouTube channels and, you know, and, and websites and merch and everything going on. You know what I mean? So like people are eating off. You know what I mean? So, so mm. it's 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 not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So it's it's no. Forget about it. it. You know, yeah, you know, what it reminds me of D. I'm gonna tell you what it reminds me of. You ever right. see? I'm a, I'm gonna put it in the sports context. Uh, you ever see like the end of a game, and it's like the last couple of minutes or seconds, and the team just starts just going whatever to win. They they down, and they just really just panic and they do whatever. In hockey, they pull the goaltender. You know what I'm saying, and, and, and put an extra skater on the ice, or or whatever the case is, they'll do that. That's what's happening in this country. People are seeing a a, a shift, you know, and um, they know, you know, the ethnicity is is changing. There's places that are flipping. The, the country is becoming more brown and black, and people are panicking. And I think that they look at this man is the last option and um, their the last hope to save them. The last hope. But I'll I'll say I I don't knock Trump. I'll say this. This is going to sound strange. I have more respect for Trump than I do Ted Cruz or Marco Rubio. Mm. 
I, more respect because I can, one thing I, can I say see your point. I can see your point with that, Kyle. I know right, you're going with it. I'm going to let you disrespect his wife. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. These dudes going to let this man disrespect. I mean, I don't even know what type of man that is. I don't mm-hmm. even know what type of man that is that that will allow a man to disrespect your wives. And then you sit up there and, I mean, pander to the man and you still with the same woman. And she's cool with that. I, I never understood that. Kevin, oh, he, didn't, he didn't just disrespect his wife. He disrespected Ted Cruz's father, too. He lied on his yeah. father, too. Yeah. Right. right. I, don't, I don't even know what time. I don't know what he's on. He said his father was involved in a JFK assassination. Yep. Oh. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Lie. This total outright lie. And yep. then look, he still Ted Cruz still um deals with him. He campaigned with him. And then he still, you know, reaches out to him and goes to Mar a Lago. So you're right. He's a piece of garbage. Like you do, you sell out. You sold out your own family for this man. Yeah, right. he's a half a he's a he's a he's a half a bitch. And like you know, yeah. I don't know how his wife even look at him as nothing. Like yo, you you're a straight bitch. And let me give yeah, that yeah, honorable right. mention to Lindsey Graham too. I for, I forgot. You know, yeah, Lindsey Graham can't forget about him. But I think he I think he got something else going on. I'm not gonna say it because it, yeah, it, I ain't gonna yeah, say it. Yeah. I ain't gonna say it. <laughs> yeah. I think I. I think it's obvious to, to me what it is, but um, yeah, we'll it's, a, it's obvious. To, it's <laughs> obvious to a lot of people what it is. Yeah, and he just oh, okay. he, he, he should just he should just come out. Just come out, yeah. and be you. Like everybody <laughs> saying that, like you know, people grab him by the pussy. Just come out the closet, Lindsay. Like, <laughs> just come out the closet. Like it's gonna be okay. Like you know, yeah. you got what's the guy that ran? Uh, the, what's the, uh, the guy that was gay that ran for um not better better rope? Um, um, yeah, I forgot um, his name. I forgot his name, man. Well, anyway, um, he won. The guy that was, what city was he in? Minnesota? Actually, Not Minnesota. I forgot the damn city. I can't damn. remember the guy. I name. shouldn't have got high last night. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I shouldn't have got high last night. My memory fucked up today, man. You know, it's all messed up. <laughs> and also, oh, I'm going to tell people that are watching the show. We supposed to have a uh, polyamory. Buddha Jedge, right? Buddha Buddha Jedge. Jedge. Buddha Jedge. Oh, Buddha yeah. Buddha Jedge. Yeah, South yeah, Bend. Yeah, South, yeah, Buddha Jedge. Buddha Jedge. Yeah, yeah South Buddha, Bend. Yeah. Yeah, man, I don't know, man. That shit was, man. I got to take some of that THC out of that. Them, them <laughs> edibles, I <last> said. <laughs> but also, I, I forgot to tell in the beginning of the show, we did have guests on that was going to come on tonight. And they are they are polyambrous, right? And they in the poly world, and people don't know about that. It's a it's a little different from what you did, traditional swinging, uh, open relationship type stuff. So I want them to explain it more, but it's different It's different forms. They are polyamory, poly, and poly something else. We got poly. Cammy, some other joint. Those people that have other out alternative relationships. So we supposed to have them on tonight, due to the fact that the anniversary, the husband planned something for the night. They was having a party, so they had to cancel for tonight because there was, was going to be too many moving pieces, and they probably been in the background. It probably been too noisy for you guys to hear hit them clearly. So we're going to reschedule. Them. So it's it's a relationship with three people involved, correct? Could be three or four, you know. So I'm like, oh, up to you know, four. Wow. I've, been, I've been I've been studying this stuff, and I did some history from back in my day when I was the party. So. So, just studying it, not just yeah, studying yeah. it. You were. Yeah, 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 I was studying. I was studying this stuff a long time ago, right? Was that recently <laughs> or, or that was long, long, oh, long, 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 long time Lisa, ago? Lisa yeah. said, I hear you. I told you so in the background. <laughs> <laughs> I'm quite, but is that the same as, like, that's not the same as having, because you could be in a polyamorous situation and not be married to more people. Like, is yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, know, I met, this, yeah, I met a few people in clubhouses like that, too. See, okay. the thing is, like, you know, I'm a married man, wife, kids, and like I need to, I need to, I need to get a little bit more answers on this. Like, okay, is he married to one of the women and not to the other, or he's married to none of the women? Like, like what's the arra- What makes it an arrangement? Like, or so, is it just just an assortment not, arrangement? So I'm not, I'm not going to talk about that couple and stuff like that, and talk about the whole poly thing. We could talk about it. Like, I want to make sure we stay on it for next for next time when they come on. Okay, but I, stay, but I, I have seen. Well, people are married, and then I see what's it's, it's contracts because you can't. Maybe can't you get in a lot of a lot of states stuff for Utah? I believe you can't have multiple wives or husbands. So, but I know they have. But I know they have contracts. Like, as a brother named Brother Polite, if anybody want to Google him or look him up in YouTube, it's very intelligent brother. I mean, he's rich, very intelligent dude, but he has four wives. Wow! And he's from Brownsville, Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So. That that it just has to be difficult to me. I don't. I That's don't what know. I'm saying. <laughs> That's yeah. a lot of. It's a lot of responsibility, man. Yeah, a lot of responsibility, a lot of pressure on you. You know, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's just. I, don't know I, if I, I don't, want more than one. I mean, yeah. I'm not trying to knock nobody's game. Whatever works yeah. for them is fine. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just that I'll be honest with you. I got some questions I want to ask about it. Yeah, yeah. We go, let's go. That's going to be a hot thing, a hot topic, especially with the women and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. well, we'll save it for that now. And, uh, throw a 
tell you one of my stories back in the day, but I ain't going to do it for now. But yeah. <laughs> um, well, let young... me say this. I want to say this first, D. Can somebody shout out the heterosexuals who believe in having one woman? Like, I know to y'all that's played <laughs> out, but we don't have no parade. We don't have nothing. So I just want to shout out to the heterosexual <laughs> brothers out there like myself <laughs> that love one woman. I just want to shout y'all too. We still here. We ain't going nowhere. We still here. We still here. Thank you, brother. <laughs> a lot of brothers out there. A lot of brothers. I'm, I'm gonna get it. We'll talk about it more when they come on. Cause I'm, I'm gonna tell you the reason. It's more. It seems like it helps out more for a lot of women. That's, I'm gonna tell you about that next week. I'm not gonna get into that part. But okay. it was a young brother that had a shirt. He wore to school and said, uh, "I think he said Black King on the T-shirt." The school. Now I have a lot of issues with schools and what they, how they police our children. I'm saying police because that's what it seems like it is. I remember I was at working at one high school, and this is back in um, the early 2000s. I think, and then you ladies, whoever's listening, remember the low rider jeans, and they, and then the black and Latino sisters, you know, young, young girls have a little bit more shape, you know, and it was always ridiculing the Latina sisters and the black sisters in the school, and then but the white girls it was more a little more more narrow, and uh, they they didn't say nothing to them. So, but this kid with the shirt just has a saying, black king celebrating himself. He's not saying like you're a white peasant, or you know, he's just saying I'm a black king. And the teacher ridiculed him and stuff like that, and and yeah. and, and well, said if he, she came in with a shirt she, uh, that said something white, should be racist. I'm like, yeah, because you're trying to probably say something different in your shirt. We're just saying, yeah, I'm a yeah. black king. Well, you'll probably be promoting supremacy. That's why yeah, you, exactly. you wouldn't wear, couldn't wear your shirt. See, the thing is, like, when I hear stuff like that, right? That the first thing I think about is that, you know. There's, there's, there's white people out there that believe that black people should have no pride or, 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 or be proud of their heritage or anything like that. You know, and, and the thing is, that's that's how I interpret that when I if I hear a teacher make a statement like that, having him have a problem that says black king, he can't be proud to be a black man or a young black man or whatever. That's offensive to you. Like, why is that offensive to you? That tells me a story about you. Mm -hmm. That's really yeah. how I look at that. Yeah, because nobody says nothing to the kid that comes in with the four leaf clover on St. Patrick's Day. Correct. Like the thing is, <laughs> you have you have certain nationalities that will get tattoos on their bodies: the Italian flag, the Irish, the, the Irish, the dude. Irish, the fighting Irish yeah. dude, and all that stuff. Like everybody can be proud to be who they are, except us. Mm -hmm. You know, what I'm saying we're not supposed to be proud, and that's how I. That's really how I interpret that. You know, what I'm saying, mm -hmm. you know. He, yeah, like, you know, you could drive around all day and see flags, nationalities on people's car, and they could be proud of who they are, but not us. They don't. They don't want well, us to be yeah. proud. Yeah. Well, you know, what I tried to do. I tried to be objective about this, um, and I, it, it took me back to uh, when I was at Virginia Union University. I had a professor um, named Dr. C. E. Jones, and back in the day, in that time, I'm sure you guys remember this. Uh, black historically black colleges in, in some bookstores had shirts that said the black of the college, the sweet of the knowledge. The knowledge that's right. Now, yeah, yeah. My, yeah, professor, that my yeah. black professor did not like that shirt. He said he felt thought it was prejudice. He said if the shirt said the white of the college, the sweet of the knowledge, we'd be up in arms. He was upset by that. And I, I always thought about when he said that. Now, this situation to me is different than that. Whether or not we agree with that situation, I'm sure um, many people don't. But this is different than that. To me, um, a person trying to um, make sure that they they take pride in who they are and, and what they are, uh, there's two dynamics. He said, black king. Well, none of those are negatives. None yeah. of those are negatives. None of them are saying that somebody cannot be a white king or Asian right. king or whatever you feel, whatever pride. For instance, all of us have a last name. And if your family is like mine, I was raised to believe my last name really meant something. I walk around thinking we practically royalty or something like that. Remember, mm -hmm. you don't do this because you're a Walter. And yeah, I mean, yeah, realistically, yeah. I mean, but that's how we were raised. I'm sure all of our families are like that. So it was to teach you. Mm -hmm. It was almost like some self-affirmation to have pride in who you are. And I don't think, um, first of all, this thing about going directly to kids without consulting their parents, I don't even understand um, how people break that protocol. Their discussions, if you had a problem, because remember, the mother came up there and felt that her son, I believe, was sent out of school or sent home or something like that. And he was reprimanded um, for that. I don't think there was anything wrong with the shirt. You know, if you're going to uplift yourself, it's fine. You don't have to put somebody else down to do that. But I do agree with Rodney's point. It seems like when it's us, it seems like it's more of a lightning rod. The young man was very intelligent. 
I thought the young man articulated himself very, very well. He explained, he didn't even need his mother to explain it. He explained what the shirt meant to him. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was very, very important. And, and I think that, that there shouldn't be a problem. That's permissible. And I think that the school was out of order and they got to stop trying to, to break these, these children. This boy could be the next, this boy could be the person that cures cancer or something like that. Stop trying to, to deflate these children and, and their aspirations of who they are and what they want to be. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's always so, a tech, yeah. yeah, like, you know, even like, you know, on, on, on black girls' hairstyles, right? And if, even black women hairstyles in the workplace, all black men hairstyles in the, in the workplace, it's like, if we wear braids, it's always something, right? Black women, wear they wear their hair natural. Like, how the fuck do you tell me not to wear my hair natural? It comes The way it comes out of my head. I mean, not me, you know, for say, but, you know, <laughs> somebody, you know, <laughs> somebody that had hair. How do you tell them not to, like, and it's like, I'm tired of y'all always trying to dictate how we look, how we can express ourselves. But a white girl could come in with blue hair and she's like, oh, she's daring. You know, or, or, or like, look, like they started cornrows or some shit. Like they, or, it's just from, a, or it's just a phase. It's just phase. a phase. Like, what the fuck, man? Like, you know, like it, it's, 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 getting, it's annoying, especially when it happens in school. Like Kelvin said it best. Like, how do you talk to the young person before you talk to the parent? Yeah, that's, no, that's just it. That's crazy. Like, how do you, and how do you have that conversation like that? Right. Yeah, you know, exactly. it, it's, it's totally, exactly. totally inappropriate. Totally yeah. inappropriate. And yeah. how would you, the teacher, don't even go to your to your supervisor first and say, yeah. I'm, I'm, "Is this offensive?" And talk to another adult before you open your fucking mouth. But see, I yeah, think, think that's. Yeah. But I think that's it. We need to have that conversation in in the um in the school systems. You know that mm-hmm. that our children, if if you're going to be educating our children, you know that we are. You know how much education goes on. If you know that you have, you know, as a teacher, you know how much education goes on within the school system. But when you leave, when the kids leave and go home, when they're watching TV, they're on the Internet, that's education happening as well. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And a lot of that is miseducation. So you have to understand that, Scott, we have to, these kids need self-affirmation. We need, uh, he needs that T-shirt to say Black King. The sister, the young, the young sister needs that T-shirt that says Black Queen. You know what I mean? They need that. You know, so to, to, to. You know, to change around some of those negative, you know, that the negative input that they're getting, you know, out in this world, you know, because you know, I, I would think as a, I would think as an educator, you would understand, you know, that how 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 people learn and how how knowledge gets passed on and how people process things and and what and what's and what's necessary in the lives of your children. That's all. And Derek, I think the most important thing is the fact that you're dealing with people who have been disenfranchised. Right. So that that is something that is very very important. That is a, a key element that may be missing to a lot of people. In other words, this is coming from a people who are told you are less than. Exactly. This is coming from a, a group of people that are told, well, you're not as smart. You can't. Exactly. My father was in the Air Force in 1970 on his way to Vietnam. They told him things that were prejudiced that he told me about then. They told my father that white uh, men are better shooters because the way yeah. they're torso wow. mm-hmm. and things mm-hmm. like that. So all these things. So what, what it is, we find ourselves digging out. From under erroneous information that has been spewed and exposed on us, exposed on us for years. And so that's why it's important. So these parents are trying to say some of the things that people used to do that would be critical to us and damaging to us. I want to make sure that you realize that you are just as smart or just as good as anybody, anybody, any one of your counterparts. And that's why. So it's a lot different. We're the only group of people that did not come to this country by choice. And it makes a big difference. It does. Correct. I um I I have a, I'm gonna share something with you guys. Like you know, my son when he was in high school, right? I uh, I came home one day and he told me that he had a political conversation with one of his teachers, right? So he explained to me what the teacher had said, and you know this was around the time that like Trump had kind of like just took office, right? And you know he said some things, but that which and and two of the things were definitely not true. But as a parent. I felt the need to go up there and I was up there the next day and I talked to the head of science department with him in the room and um, parents have to get involved when their kids come home and tell them something that inappropriately happened. A teacher should not be having a political conversation with your kid because basically you got to understand teachers are in a position. They're a huge influence on your children. You know what I'm saying? So a lot of things they say, whether it's negative or positive is going to impact your kids. So, I, I went up there and I, I really went hard body on him and checked him. And I told him anytime he wants to have political conversations, give me a call. Give me a call. And, and we don't have a political conversation with a child. You know what I'm saying? Because you have an advantage. 
So exactly. the child, you have an advantage because you're going to spew a little bit more knowledge than he, even though your knowledge is inappropriate. But why don't you come and have this conversation with me at any time? I never got the invitation, by the way. But parents have to get involved when they hear that those teachers are saying inappropriate things to their kids, having conversations they shouldn't be having. Yo, you got to get up there and you got to check their asses as hard yeah. as you can. And that's you how, know, I mean, how, how about the, how, how about the how about the how about the, uh, the the thing where listen, teachers get the best hours of our children's lives. That's true. That's why they're so impressionable. Yeah, right. that's, they literally yeah. get the best hours. Our children are well. Our children are well rested. They're fed. You know, and yeah. you send them off with the with the express intent to pick up information from this person. Yeah. That person has an incredible advantage. Advantage. Exactly. You They're in the front of the classroom. Like They're an adult. They're exactly. speaking to the children. The kids look to this person as, yo, this person is full of knowledge. He's a teacher. Exactly. What they say must be true, which is not not the case. Teachers have effed up views as well you know what because i'm saying they, and they yeah, exactly. yeah and they say things that they shouldn't say just like anybody else yeah you know? they have a whole life but, outside of, and, and this is important this is important as a person that works in ministry let me say this so when it comes to like messages or sermons and stuff like that you know what i do i stick to the text yeah. that's what holds i'm that's what i you know or i stick to this text i can't get up there it's not the kelvin walter hour you know what i'm saying in other words i stick to the text that's what people come in to hear you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. what you do is you stick to your curriculum. That's you what it, in other go, words, man. you're not a poli sci teacher. Yeah. You're a science yeah. teacher. You teach science. That's what it's in the, what you see what I'm saying. Yeah. You know, I remember when I was a kid in fifth grade, I had a, a teacher. He didn't believe in giving homework. Right. And, you know, the kids, we was hyped. Yeah. And I told my parents, I go home. My parents like, well, do your homework. I'm like, oh, I don't have no homework. My mother's like, what you mean you don't have homework? I was like, he don't give homework. Yeah. I come home the next day like, mom, guess what? I got transferred to a new class. She's like, I know you did. Because I did it. My mother, my mother followed up there. That's right. Yeah. You don't give homework. My parents like, yeah. you must be crazy. He going to get yeah. some homework. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> it's, yo, and speaking of that, listen, in Baltimore, it was, um, I don't know if you guys saw it on the news. It was this one kid. He was uh, supposed to turn to a senior uh, this year. His mother found out, got a letter, I guess, finally saying that your son will not graduate on time. But the boy was in the 12th grade. Come to find out when she finally goes up to the school that his grade that he never got credits for the grades they just kept pushing him up and giving him like he was ninth grade to give him tenth grade class tenth grade to give him 11 11 getting 12 but he never passed any of the classes so he has to start back over as a freshman so the mother was mm -hmm. upset yeah yeah the mother was upset yeah. that nobody uh, told her and notified her now i said to me as working in schools 18 years i think everybody dropped the ball mother Teachers, deans, uh, assistant principal, and principal have dropped the ball and failed that young person. You know what? So, D, I'm gonna tell ahead. you something, D. It's it's tough for me to blame the mother so much because from what I understand, she works three jobs. You know what I mean? She's got the other kids in there and everything. And um, and she and from what I understand, she was saying, "Listen, you know, unless I get a call or something like that, you know, from the teachers, or you know, then or I get a report card or something, whatever she said." Mm -hmm. I would I think if they advanced my children, I I assume that he was good enough to do the work and he was good enough to 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 be advanced. So it's kind of tough for me, but at the same time, yeah, no, right, McCall. The, the mother didn't, she did know, but she didn't know. The the, the the issue is this. I've been to the I've been on the side of things, I've been on the side of the equation where you know something didn't something didn't get passed on to me, and um and I found out about it later. You know what I mean, and we we had to come by and fix it. But I I know that myself. I have a I'm, I'm in a better situation. If the sister's wait working three out three three jobs, and I've been a single parent at one point in my life, you know what I mean. I know how tough that is. You know, I think what happens is that that now that system, that school system, they need to really. I don't know what that's something that's systemic to me. You know what I mean? Because I don't see how you as a principal or whoever I don't know how that actually works. But I don't know how if you as a teacher or a principal or whatever can go ahead and advance. And here's the thing: the child was was near the top of his class with a point one three GPA. Yeah, the whole school system. The whole school system in Baltimore. The whole, it had a, he was it was a, a quite a few kids that actually had the same situation going on. But let me let me just chime in on the mother real quick because I'm like working in school. I can see what you're saying that she being a single mom and all that stuff like that. But the grades are online, right? That's two. Yeah, things, that's right? what I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. grades grades are online. You get three report cards. Each semester, I mean, each term, like so the spring and fall. So that's a total of six report cards. 
Yeah. You was a parent, even though you worked three jobs. You're like, let me see your report card. Yeah. Yeah. No. No. That's, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. It, 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 like, like, come on. It's like, like it's know? like it's like with my kids, right? I, I I I'm in a house with six kids. There's no way that I don't. I know when there's a homework missing because there's a parent portal that I can go into and check each person's class. Like me and my wife are on top of that. So to be able to go three, four years and never see a report card or an assignment, I just find that just so but, difficult to believe. But the age of the child, right? The thing is, you can check this on. And this is the thing: you could be at work. There's times I've been at work and I went on my phone, checked the parent right. portal, and it takes me five four minutes to look right. at it. You know no, what I'm saying? No, it's, and it's, I get a notification. Wait, and I get a notification for when progress reports are coming out. Yeah. I get a notification when report cards are coming out. So I, I, I'll be honest with you, and I'm not trying to knock nobody's parenting, but I would consider myself a bad parent if I let my kids slip through four years and didn't realize that they were doing poorly in school. No, I would as well, Rodney. That's me. But here's the other thing, too. I don't know what it's like to work three jobs to make ends meet. No, I get that. No, Derek, I get that. But I'm talking about age. three minutes to look on your phone. You go to the bathroom right. and look at three, your phone and look at. But it. here's the thing. But let's also look at the age of the child. This child is going on 18 years old. It's 18. You expect the child to have a certain amount of independence to be able to do it, and you and you require it if you're working three three jobs. You require that child at some point say, "Listen, you need to do your work." It's not like she can listen. It's not like she's going to turn around and be able to do algebra one or two at this point anyway in the game. You know what I mean? I can't remember nothing about algebra or trig or anything like that. I can't help my child when they hit eighteen, when they hit high school. Me personally, other people better, but I, there's a lot of things I can't help my child with with regard to their homework and everything like that. You know, so or their schoolwork. So you kind of require the child to be able to to kind of independently do what they need to do. You know, especially again when you're working, when you when you're away, that that woman is never home. You know, and she her, her, she's just trying to put food on the plate, and the child has to go up, and and the, the boy has to go up and put himself to get himself on the bus or get himself to school, get himself back home, feed himself, the whole nine yards. You know, so it's kind of hard for me to say. It's, it's so you basically you say the, the kid is basically raising himself, like he's he is. You know, you're, he's got to be. Look, do the math. Just do the math. I, but Derek, I still say, how do you m miss a report card? How At do you least, miss like Lisa said, they're, they're, they're posted online. It's easy to check. Oh, yeah, so. it, that's I, what I'm can, saying. I can it's, explain it. It's I called parent. It. It's a parent. It's a parent portal. You go into it. You can. I can tell when my kid's been late to school or late to a yeah. class. It yeah. breaks everything down. Yeah, it does. You know what I'm but saying? Y'all so, burying the lead. Y'all burying the lead. I hate to say it. Yeah. But yeah, I've but, been it, to Baltimore. I, let, let's just end this. No, I'm serious. I got cousins in Baltimore, so I'm not trying to disrespect. I'm just being honest with y'all. You can start. You can start in in going down the Eastern Seaboard, Newark, Trenton, parts of Philly, Baltimore. I've been to, I've been to parts of New Orleans where reading ain't even start yet. Okay, I'm trying to tell you. I'm just trying. Y'all might as well just listen. You have to take in context where this school is at. And 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 so what you all are thinking of it is conventional parenting. That's what you okay. guys are thinking of. So so you're talking about look on your phone and all no, stuff like that. No, I'm no, no, I'm not point. Situation. No, I no, get Calvin, point. My point, saying, my point is, my 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 point is, is that you can't. How do you say you don't know? Now I do know with you know Baltimore, the failing school systems. I'm totally understanding that. But the thing is, how as a parent did you not know? Nothing until before, four before years four later. Years, that's, that's for four years, that's a stretch. That's a stretch. I don't because care what school system you go to. Kids that that are not I equipped. No, a lot of parents. Let me go. Like, like a lot of parents go through mental issues, right? They they exhausted. All kind of stuff is going on. We don't know if the parent had a bad relationship with themselves in school themselves, right? So mm -hmm. now I'm gonna flip it to now because working inside, I know how skill, schools can be fucked up. Yeah, so, no doubt. I so, worked so, in school yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. You know, yeah. So the teacher. The te not teachers, rather, because there's a lot of teachers, but the administration should stop looking at these kids as data and passing them along for their own mm. for their own thing, right? That's what they look at. How many kids graduated so they can look good on their reports, and it goes down to downtown and all that bullshit. Yeah. How do the, the staff don't do home visits? How where's the phone calls? The parent just argue where's the phone calls for one thing. Say she don't have a cell phone, we don't know the situation. Maybe she's gonna flip. So, but how? Why did where the home visit? The kids had a. If you got bad grades, you got bad attendance. Let's keep That's it a right. buck. 
And so it, that those two go hand in hand. Right. Yeah. You know, the kids not there every day. If somebody see you like, damn, so and so say every day, like, you know, what's going yeah. on? So, but you know, the thing what I in that video for black people to see, the kid had a PlayStation, all that kind of shit. So they so now I'm going back to the parents. Yeah. So if you got a PlayStation, I don't know how much some shit's cost. I'm gonna say three hundred dollars. I don't know what you call it. Uh, video game. Two, I don't, yeah, about three something dollars. About three hundred dollars and all that yeah. stuff. And and in the video, he was playing the PlayStation. So that's why I keep saying everybody along the way failed the young people. The whole community failed. This oh, is, my this is my the sister's a teacher. Time. Okay. Yeah. This is the first said. time I'm gonna just say. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Ray. Go ahead okay. Your assist, a teacher with 15 years of experience, education, and motivation starts at home. Mm-hmm. Will it yeah. do your best? Comes from structure and understanding. Starting with the parent. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Real, yeah. You know? yeah. And the thing is, like, like, you know, like D, you say he worked in the schools. I worked in the schools. Like, I've seen situations where parents are not doing their job as parents and that's why the kid is failing like i've seen kids in the, in the dean's office and in the principal's office sitting there in trouble waiting for the parent to come up and i mean they are draped in yeah. 200 300 400 dollar stuff mm-hmm. so the thing is the not having thing is not really accurate it's just basically the parent may be making bad decisions so now you got on you know 200 dollar jeans you got on 450 dollar sneakers you know what I'm saying? All this stuff. And this guy basically got three credits and he's supposed to be in the 11th grade. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then you want to come up to the school and act like you don't know. You do know. You do know. You well, just make different thing. choices. Even if she knew. Just okay. Devil's advocate. And if she knew, then she can't say she didn't know. Okay, but that's fine. Devil's advocate. Even if she knew. What could she have done about it? There's, there's, what could she have? No, seriously. And it, think no, about I'm going to tell you. because she have done about it? You know what I mean? She got. She's gonna take time off work. It's a reason why she's working three three jobs, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. At some point, you need in her and, and her argument, which I kind of feel and I understand because I'm very sensitive. I know she needs someone from that school, right? Okay, so did no one call her from the school? No, that's what she right? said. She said she didn't get enough phone calls. Okay, so that's what like I'm that. saying. So, 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 so no one called her either. The whole system know? failed. Everybody, so, right? Everybody yeah. failed. So, I, so we we are speculating on what she knew. What she didn't know, if she could access the portal, if they had a portal, if it was up to date, we're speculating on a lot of different things. You know what I mean? But what we do know is that at some point, or I would think we would know that they would have the child's number for his mother and that they would call her within some time, sometime in four in four years. You know what I mean? And she never got a call. That's an issue to me. You know? Yeah. So so I, I don't know. I think, I think, I think as I I I I assume and and, and I think similar. That there's probably a lot of a lot of blame to go around, you know. Obviously with the mom, but most definitely with the school system itself. Because understand, she's not the only mother they were doing that with. Yeah, that child was near near the top half <laughs> of the school system. How many look? How many kids do they have to be do for that child to be near the top half with a point one three GPA? I didn't yeah. know that was possible. First of all, and I thought that Me was a either. typo. This is, the, this is the thing that I'm saying. And the, the reality of it is this. And you remember when Dr. Perry was on the show, he said, if you are not reading at reading level by the time, if you're not reading, I'm sorry, Marsha said where, where, where his father was. And this is how Polly plays out. This is how Polly helps out. But no, no. <laughs> it's 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 we already know where the father is. And that's we why we need father is. And but that's this, why this I'm what I'm saying. Right. This is what I'm saying. At, at, at the end of the day, he said, if you're not reading at grade level by the time you're in third grade, Statistically, you will never read on grade level in your life, statistically. So a young man in Baltimore who now can't get into the military, who now can't get into college, who now will not even hopefully will get a GED maybe, because I'll be honest with you, after 18, 19, you don't need to be sitting in in class with with 13 and 14 year olds. And so I I just think it's bad. I agree with D. Everybody failed. But the worst of the brunt of it is going to go to the mother and the son. And that's why every parent has got to be an advocate for their own child. Yeah. You got right. to be on that's top right. of it. That's yeah, right. You got to be on top of it. No matter who's, no matter who's nobody's going to care about your child more than you. No one should care about your child more than you. Nobody can live your child's life. But that, your child. That's right. You know what I mean? So at the end of the day, you know that's that's. It doesn't matter who's at fault or who you know who's to blame. You and know your child needs what they need. And now we have an eight, eighteen year old in class with a fourteen year old. So that's another subject. And that's right. another subject. And I've been mean, and, right, and I, and I could right. go on for that. that. I have a problem with too. It's kind of bugged yeah. out, even though I work in oh. schools, because that can be tricky. But that's a whole thing. That's a whole other thing. But since we're yeah. talking about like, where's your daddy? 
uh, Cuomo wanted some ladies to call him daddy. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but this, you see Cuomo's up there, you know, Governor Cuomo in New York City is allegedly having some problems with some women making accusations about him and stuff like that. And this goes back to my point from a long segment we had a while back. There aren't any good side chicks anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, T. This time I'm going to do it right. I'm going to do it right this time. I want to just thank the sponsors in advance before you leave. That's all. <laughs> so, you know what I'm saying? Like, they ain't playing their position right. You know what I'm saying? They could have got a little job later on. You know, but, is there a you know. chance that our governor is, is telling the truth? Is there a chance that our governor... All right. Listen, man, I, don't, I don't know. Nah, nah. I mean, all right. Let me be honest with you. I'm going to say something that's right. foul. I'm going to say something that's foul. And this is going to be foul. And I know it's going to be foul. Go, go for it, Kevin. I'll just go say it. it like this. Thank you, Nicole. Like Thank this. you, Nicole. Thank you. Even, yeah. if, even McCall if, says the side <laughs> chicks is hot. They they yeah, it's shady. It's, 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 they out of pocket, man. I'm going to say it, man. I'm going to say, 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 say it hypothetically. If I were married, and if I were married and I had some indiscretions, it would be with a woman that my wife would understand at least. That's all I'll say. Because Bill Clinton <laughs> and other people, I just don't understand when you're going to ruin your life or risk it all. I don't understand why the person looked like before and way before. <laughs> That's what I just don't understand. I know it's wrong. I know it's foul. It's but we remember that Monica Lewinsky and Jennifer oh, Flowers and all these people. I'm <laughs> saying... At least, oh, at least boy, get your boy. wife some respect. <laughs> at least tell your wife this is me along Beyonce, Jennifer Lopez, somebody, yeah. Yeah. not Florida Kevin. Evans. Yeah. <laughs> Have some respect for Yo. your own wife, Kelvin. I know what you're saying. You're saying that if you're going to cheat, you should cheat up. Go right? all the way. But Go a, all the way. We're How? gonna. I'm gonna reveal something. <laughs> I'm gonna reveal something from the man handbook. Uh-oh, here come the sponsors. Yeah, they going. The sponsors. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm going to see what you're going to say. The thing is this. The reason why lots of men don't cheat up because the Florida Evanses are freaking more accessible. <laughs> They're easier prey. Low-hanging fruit. <laughs> men, men, Low-hanging fruit. Yeah. And men are going to attack their self-esteem and they take advantage. And that's yep. why men cheat down. Yo, hey, I'm, right. Hey, you're right. Let me, remember Robin Harris? Y'all remember Robin yeah, Harris? Yeah, yeah. Remember, Robin right. Harris? remember the joke he had? He said he said he married to an ugly woman because ugly yeah, woman yeah. lets you do whatever you want. So he, he said, "Listen, do whatever you want." He said, "I'm said, bit, bit, I'm saying, he said, baby, I'm going to the moon." <laughs> he said, <laughs> "Well, you you be careful, <laughs> baby. That's why you get one of these." Uh, Let me just say to all the women out there, we're joking. We're, we're joking. joking. We're just we all just messing with you guys. Joking. We're having fun. Uh, we're having fun. Uh, she said, "Side chicks versus employees." We're not condoning sexual no, harassment. No, no, we're not. Yeah, we just we're not having condoning. A, we're having a fun. Like Cuomo, because I have my problems with Cuomo when he said uh, Christopher Columbus Day should be stripped down. I think that shit should be abolished from New York City. So I do have my some issues when I think he dropped the ball with the whole thing with the COVID thing with the uh, the elderly in the homes juking the stats. That was some mm. bullshit. I hate when people play with the fucking data. And now then we got people, and we have people that died and shit like that from that stuff. So it's like, yeah, yeah I mean, we are talk. We we can't forget we're talking about a politician here, right? Correct? Yeah, yeah they okay, But we got to yeah. admit though, these are two separate things though. That 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 accusation, which is kind of taking um center stage now, you mm -hmm. know, those other things, all the scandals that he looks like he was just wrong. You know, this situation, yeah. um, we do have to consider intent, and we do have to get a man some type of due process. I think right now in this culture, um, basically we're in a blame culture that as soon as somebody says something, um, and, and what happens is this, it, it gets exploited on both sides. There's some people that will falsely accuse somebody because they know it carries weight. And then there's somebody else that will just purposely ignore somebody or do something because they feel like the person doesn't have credibility. So it is, as as D alluded to a moment ago, it's just no winners in this situation. Yeah, everybody and um, what I learned is this. The best way is just if you're interested in somebody, just don't say nothing. It's a secret. That's it. I'm so glad I'm married right now because I couldn't do the rest, man. I don't know what's going on. Yo, it's crazy out there. I, I crazy. I'm too, be I'm out too, there it's too crazy out here for these. I'm too pretty. They be all over me. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's a gift and a curse to be me right yeah. now, baby. <laughs> Dude, I, I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. I don't know how Cuomo will fight them all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The dude, no, the dude is the governor. He's rich. You know what I'm saying? I mean, he's a, he's got power. 
I mean, but he, this but is. But he was this filled is, himself. He's huh? filling himself. He's filling yeah, himself. Yeah, he filled he himself. He's filling himself out. for a long time. Yeah, I know. What's so good I, is it to be governor if I can't, you know. All right, so check this, check this out. Let me say this. So so back in the day, y'all remember when VH1 used to do a um a show called Divas Live? Who? Y'all remember Divas Live? VH1, Divas Live? Y'all remember that? Okay, so yeah. VH1 used to do a show called Divas Live. And one year, they um that was I was working for the limousine company. And that was the year I, I met Destiny's Child and, and all these different groups and stuff like that. But what happened was, I'm telling you the truth, Rodney. <laughs> you. So what Are you was, seeming like, here you going to talk about Beyonce? I had, a, um, I had a credential on my neck. So, you know, it just shows that you're working for VH1 and you can go, and this is at Madison Square Garden, right? The theater, the garden. That credential made people think, for some reason, I'm some type of high-level executive or something like that, not the dude working for the limousine company. <laughs> but I'll never forget they got a, a the red carpet and then they got velvet ropes. So you got the fans that are on one side of the street, then there's those of us working that we can go through the red carpet and the velvet rope. I never forget there's this group of young ladies, and this girl handed me her room key, her hotel room key. They were from Atlanta. Okay, now I know what you're thinking. Oh, Kelvin, that happens to you all the time. You're a sex symbol. No, no, no. The thing about this, <laughs> the thing about this was. The fact that they figured because they figured because I had a credential that I was really somebody big over there. So first of all, let me say no, D. I did not go to the room. Secondly, I thought about it if she could give me you know that, that question was coming. That question right, was that's coming. what I'm saying. So yeah. I was just I was just thinking. Now what I realize is this: when you know, when it's based on risk reward, nothing good could come out of that situation. You pretty much have made yourself. You can put yourself in situations. Where no matter what, it's going to be hard to explain it. Anything go wrong. Somebody could say something. And that's just the reality. And see, a lot of times I think when we're younger, we don't understand it. I think I may have told you guys one time I was coming home from school and this white woman pulls up in a, a, in a, a Mustang. And she's like, oh, I know you must go to the school down there. I'll drive you to the station because I used to walk to the train station on Long Island. It was very far. And I go home, I tell my mother, I'm like, you know, this lady, this white lady was so nice to me. She drove me home. My mother's like, you got in the car with a white woman, you fool. I mean, my mother went <laughs> off because she was just afraid the woman could have said anything. Yeah, yeah. She and made all types of allegations. Yeah, yeah, and that's yeah. the thing. You know what I'm saying? So that's it. You, you know, in Cuomo, if you're 60 years old, if you're 60 years old and you're going to engage in a conversation um, with a 25-year-old subordinate Correct. that has anything to do with sexuality, who she sleeps with, does she find uh, older men attractive, all this stuff like that, if that's what happened, you already know. You've been around this long enough. His father was Governor Mayor of Cuomo. He yeah. was raised around politicians. He was raised around scandals. Certain things you know is just going to come back on you. And Yo, you they go my man. License. They go my man. A <laughs> ghost. <Go by. laughs> you we give people license to do that thing. <laughs> you know. Yo, remind me to send him a shirt, Derek. I got him. Yeah, good job. <laughs> Yo, but see, he's feeling himself and he's feeling too many people at the same time. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. allegedly, allegedly. But you know, but men have to understand. Like, I have, I always had like a big female team that work work under me, and you have to be respectful to all the women. Like, you really have mm -hmm. to, like, you got to know your boundaries and understand like that. And this, and then you have conversation. When we have conversation, like I have, I talk about the nails. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, like, I learned a lot. I learned how to do pedicures, manicures, all that kind of stuff. I learned a lot. Learn for the ladies. Yeah. Instead of yeah. filling up on them. See, so, this this is the thing, right? When you when you're in a position of power, right? I don't kind of feel like if you if you if you're that kind of guy and you you want to get at women at work and all that like from like my past experiences long 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 time ago like the women that are interested are going to show you that they're interested. Yeah, they will. They they're going yeah. to show you. Yeah. You don't have to walk around like a, a a creep and basically you know kind of like push yourself on people. They they were I, I don't know. Like I said, it's from my past yeah. experience. There were going to be women that are going to show you they're interested, so you don't have to go and um, sexually harass anybody. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think, I That's think just how talking, I saw it. I think we're talking about, and Nicole just uh, sparked my, my mind about something when she said people used to fall in love in the, um, in the workplace. We, we're talking about a different standard right now, you know, yeah. because at one point you're talking about Cuomo, you're talking about these guys who, you know, of a certain age, you know. They came up and there was a certain standard. You know what I mean? Even myself, I kind of struggle a little bit with what they consider, what's considered harassment now. And you know what I mean? And I, I think certain things are, are obvious. You know what I mean? Certain when it comes to harassment and all the things, things are obvious. But then you have some people who maybe have, uh, I don't know, they have, I don't know, uh, uh, 
some, some I don't know, a problem or something. You know, yeah, it, you know, yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what the word is. It's, it's, it's different now because, like, you know, like in the, in the job I have, like, you know, you're scared as, especially as black men, right? And then yeah. People saying like you just want to flirt in the job, it might stop it. It does think you, even when you want to think about saying, "Oh, that's a nice dress," or you smell yeah. good, because now it's the Me Too movement. Correct. That will come right at me like, "Yo, only thing I was saying like you look yeah. nice." Now, do I say you look yeah. nice anymore, or yeah. you know, "Oh, I like your hair; it looks really nice." Or you okay. can just ask about the perfume because you might want to get it for your lady. Like, oh, that's a nice perfume. It smells good. Okay. okay. Like, Nicole like, asked a very. She asked a question. question. Nicole yeah. asked a question. She said, "Has it changed the way?" Um, men flirt in the workplace, and uh, as D just alluded to, it does. Yeah. Now, the answer is yes. The answer is yeah, yes. Yeah. Now check this out. This yeah. is the thing. When you look at the way, for instance, D, when you're set, when you're making a comment, now what would happen is this. Usually, guys have. First of all, the Me Too movement. I don't think takes intent in, into consideration. Sometimes the intent is not to be foul. Mm -hmm. Men don't get the benefit of the doubt because of the mm -hmm. reputation mm -hmm. of men. Period. So what happens is this. Some dudes, like for instance, I've seen dudes use old school lines like, oh, uh, tell your boyfriend he's very lucky and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So it's just your way of not acting, you know, trying to pretend you're not trying to talk to her, acknowledging she's with somebody, and then you're letting her know you're attractive. So, mm -hmm. so you're trying to just, you know what I'm saying? But for instance, I kind of think risk reward. Like for instance, I, I saw this woman regularly um, in the workplace who dresses very, very nice. The woman is married. She very, very nicely dressed. And so one or two times I want to say, hey, I think you, you know, that's really a nice outfit, whatever like that. Then I thought about it. Would I stay in the game from that? Like, like yeah. there, there could be one thing in the game, which is me just saying, hey, I want to pay you a compliment. And there's 99 things that could go wrong that can have that misinterpreted. And I'm saying at this stage of the game, it's just probably not worth it. Absolutely. Yeah, I, right. I agree. I, agree. I think I agree. I, I, the answer straight up is yes, it does affect, affect men flirting in the workplace. Absolutely. To like it's like I said like earlier, it's now best if you're a female, a single female interested in somebody in your job, it's probably now safer for you to basically let that gentleman know that you may be interested or whatever. Because let's, let's let's face the facts. The whole thing of this um sexual harassment and men flirting at, at work, the reason that these things blow up is because it's advancements that are not wanted by the person that you are coming on to. So the thing is, that's what puts you at risk because it's advancements that somebody doesn't want. Yep. yep. Right. Right. Yeah. So, what so that that said, I say, let the let the woman lead in this case. Hey, let her, <laughs> let the let the guy know you let, let the guy know you're checking for him. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But uh, well, anyway, we need a we will pass our time. We gotta go to a little commercial break, real quick. Let's go to a commercial break, Jamie. week you know i take a few minutes out and i'm everybody know i'm a big movie guy and everything and i'm a hard critic and i was very excited this week to see coming america and i love seeing black people on screen so you know so it was, that was one thing but coming america came out for me and amazon gave it two and a half stars i would have gave it two stars at best wow. and I, wow. I, I i didn't totally didn't wish they would have never even made it over there yeah i, I probably yeah, won't I watch it i probably won't watch it again 
I haven't uh, what, seen it yet. What, what, what didn't you like about it, D? Where, where you want me to start? The acting? <laughs> <laughs> Too many cameos? The the coonery stuff? The best part of the show to me for the whole movie was when he was in the barbershop with the old guy. Mm-hmm. And how, how? Why didn't they get? They should be dead by now. They were old back then. They should have been already right. dead. But I, otherwise, I could have. It was too predictable. It, it, I, I thoroughly wasted an hour and forty minutes of my life. I can't I, get back. I, wow. I, yeah, I think I think <laughs> I, I kind of I, I disagree in a sense. I, I I I think that it was. I think it was a good show. I just think that it wasn't meant to be. Listen, the entire premise of the 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 the, the, the original movie wasn't realistic. You know what I mean? So. So when the guys, when the, you allude to the older barber man, you know, they a lot. Yeah, I thought about the damn, they still around. But yeah, why not? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah. Just like, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, that, I, I could get past the older guys being yeah, still yeah, alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, 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 like, but I, 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 and I love that part. But I actually think that it was cool. I love the, they gave a lot of, um, they had all the elements. They gave a lot of, a lot of callbacks, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of set of fan service, you know, um, and it was just, and it was just, uh, it was just a simple movie. It was just kind of like, you know, it was, just, it was something to just watch, which, if, which, if, you know, and, and reminisce and everything. And, um, and yeah, you know, it, it was, it was very, you know, I don't know if you want to call it coonery or ethnic or black or whatever you want to call it, humor. Let's, 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 you know, let's, let's, but it let's, was, let's, I guess. But you know, it, it was funny. Let's go. Let's funny. go. Let's go with the acting. When you got the dude from Power, I can't remember his name. The, the R and B singer dude, bro. You gonna tell me that was good acting? No, it didn't have to be. It's a comedy. It's literally a comedy. <laughs> it's which like, it's which a guy from Power is in it? Which guy from the, Power? The one that um Dre, the one that plays Dre. Oh, oh, oh! Everybody wanted to kill Dre. Yeah. I didn't catch yeah. him. You know, you know what my concern was. He was, he, he, a, was he, he was Wesley Snipes' son. Oh yeah, I'm he a fan was. Of the movie right, like everybody right. else. You know what my concern was? I always think when you have a sequel, it's because there's an unresolved issue. And I just didn't think the first one had an unresolved issue. I think it was yeah. happily ever after, and that was it. That was the right. thing. You know what I mean? And so that was my concern. And <clears throat> you, you usually, the truth of the matter is this, especially for people that don't know, and I'm sure most of us know, but Eddie Murphy's career um, out of the gate was like 48 hours, trading places, Beverly Hills yeah. Cop, come to America. I mean, he was killing, I mean, immediately. And so now looking at him on the back end of his career, it's kind of tough because I, I, you know, I was telling one of my friends that I'm so nostalgic. I want things to stay the same, but at the end of the day, you just can't catch lightning in a bottle. You can't. And so, just like for instance, Eddie wanted to do this, then he wanted to jump on stage and do another stand-up tour. I just hope he doesn't because at the end of the day, it's not going to be raw. It's not going to be delirious, and you can come out of the gate so hot that anything you do is just not going to stand so you don't, you don't think he can live up to his to his past. You don't actually think he's funny anymore. Right, because what you just what you just described, Derek was a Tyler Perry movie. You just described <laughs> It exactly. was just something to watch, and, and he's That's he should it. be above Tyler, that. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like, but, 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 but who's, okay, fine, fine, Tyler Perry. But who's hiring black actors right now? No, 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 no. What I'm saying right? is this. At the, who, the, at the end of the day. I, listen, I get it. 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 Trust me, I do. I, love, I remember to see Arsenio, too. You're right. Right. I know. Yeah. Happy to see Arsenio, Eddie James, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Right. You haven't seen. And that was the whole point, McCole. People who had in great costumes, it was dancing, there were cameos, it was music. They actually they actually put in, a, a, I would wish that they would have put in a couple extra, uh, put a, a few more artists in there for the, for, the, for the soundtrack. They had the veto in there on the soundtrack. I would have liked to have seen more Afrobeat uh, artists put on a, uh, put on put on a soundtrack. I guess I, you know, I understand. You know, we not one hundred percent ready for that here in America because it kind of was targeted to an American audience, even though it was about Africa. You know what I'm saying? A fictional African country. You know, but it's a it's a movie about a fictional play playing African. Country. <laughs> yes, Reese. Yeah, yeah. You know far. what I'm saying? You took it too said, far. Took it too far. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. Reese, Reese, what I'm saying is this. What I'm saying is this. I'm not saying Eddie's because I'm not a Tyler Perry fan. What I'm saying was. Neither am I, his, by the way, but he's when, right. when Derek described it, Derek is describing an after school movie or something. We're yeah. talking about Eddie Murphy <laughs> here. Like, I don't I don't want to hear Prince put out an album and be like, you know, it was decent. It has some good songs. No, you don't want you know <laughs> what Eddie Murphy Mur- standard. Do you agree that Eddie Murphy is a genius? I do agree. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, do. So 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 why don't you why don't you put your trust in his genius? You just well, said to him, did, you and did, and he did he did I agree and that the people do stand up. The people yeah. that did the Godfather three was geniuses until the Godfather three came out. 
the thing is, and and of course, what I'm saying exactly. is, if you have no. a franchise, I'm saying certain things don't tamper with it. I haven't seen it yet. I'm okay. just disappointed of all the people that have seen it because I'm a big Eddie Murphy fan. And no, I, I, Tyler Perry is not in his stratosphere. I, I just want to say this, right? I haven't seen it yet either, right? And I kind of agree with Kelvin because the reason why is like, okay, coming to America number one was Thank made you, in oh, 80. Was it was it made in 80? It was made in, when was the first tournament? Like 88, 89? 88. 88. 88. Okay. Now we're in 2001. You did a sequel that is for something that was a classic and was like 30 years old. I mean, like I agree with Kelvin. Like, why did you touch it? You, it would, it would be too hard to top it. You know what I'm saying? I think that's a, that's the risk that Eddie Murphy took when he did that. He, he took 30 years to do a sequel on something. And let, me get, and let me get the one part too. Was unrealistic. I don't care how high I was, could be. I could smoke crack, have a heroin needle on my arm. I'm not sleeping with Leslie Jones, bro. Long time ago. Long time ago. <laughs> it's never no ago. way. Never ago. Never ago. Never ago. There's oh, no oh, okay. way. Oh, my bad. My bad. You ain't never bad. had a weekend, man. I, I was trying honest. to save you, D. I was trying to save you. Listen, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to just be honest with you. I, I try to stay away from that because I get criticized a lot. And no, um, I'll, they I'll, may I'll, say I'll, that I've been, I've been uh, uh, programmed about beauty and stuff like that. Yes, I have. Western civilization <laughs> has messed me up. I'm going to just be real with you. I don't understand why that had to be. And I think Leslie Jones, I think, gets casted because of the way she looks. Correct. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to leave it at that. I'll just say this. I would not have allowed myself, even in, in print, even in the land of make-believe, to be in a relationship with Leslie Jones. I'm just, And there's no disrespect. It's just the truth. It it's really is. You, you know what I'm saying? I thought that was Leslie Jones over uh, Rodney's shoulder right there. So as a result, <laughs> what I'm saying is... No, no, this was I just like that. No, I thought that's what it was. I didn't realize it wasn't. But what I'm saying is... What I'm saying is... What I'm saying is this. But for Eddie Murphy, I have a certain standard. And I let Dr. Doolittle and all those other things go, but this is the this is maybe his biggest Thank franchise. You. It may be his biggest franchise. You know what I'm saying? And I mean... I'm glad you guys like to see. I give Derek and Nicole credit because they liked it. I'm saying when you came out of trading places, you didn't hear nobody talking about, you know what they should have done? But when see, you came out of Beverly Hills Cop, you didn't hear like, you know what it was missing? No, you didn't no, hear none no. of that then. But see, that's the thing. Like she said, why does he have to top it? There wasn't such a big gap. Why can't you just enjoy it for what it is? It's I don't know. Nice, I was brought up wrong. Nah, man, happy, nah, nah, happy. Just enjoy nah, it and nah, laugh. I, it you know, it these half these jokes that y'all laughed at to these comedians. We didn't didn't make no me, bad comedians. But, they are not Derek, high comedians. Derek, you know? it didn't really make me laugh. That's what I'm saying. It didn't give me yeah, yeah. nothing. It made me really laugh a couple it times. It didn't give me nothing, man. So it's like, uh, come on, man. And then like any movie that have Michael Blackson in, I knew it was going to be trash. I knew he should have been trash. Michael Black is the most fat, overrated but, comedian out there. Yeah, he is. Uh, I agree with that. But 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 still, <laughs> I'm glad. He, but I'm glad he got a job. He had to be in. You know what I'm saying? Like he I'm had to be in. Like, you know, I'm not like, oh, he got paid. Oh, he got Look, he could have got a job at McDowell's. Derek, we can't. Derek, yeah, this is two different things, though. It's not about just the putting job and out for black people can work. We're talking about, in other words. This is the, the this is the number one grossing black actor in history. Right. Yes. So and, 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 he's, mean, and he's and he's a prisoner of that, and you would imprison him by his own success with his own success. Well, you look, he said he, him, he raised that standard himself. He said, "I'm not doing no more." Success. He said, "He this is what I heard." He said during the press, he said, "We waited four years to get this script right because I'm not right. putting out any more movies just for a check." There so you, if you came out of that after four years, there and you you're telling that. me. After four years, this is what it was, and I hear Dito Mahin laugh. After four years of a script, come on, that that's not Eddie Murphy. There we go. See that man? Listen, nah, that is no, 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 no. He just did the movie. No, 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 no. I'm not letting that slide. I'm not critical. I'm not critical of our own movies. I'm critical of any movie. Everybody knows how I am. I give smoke to anybody. This is art. I study movies. It's art. Wait a minute. Half of those comedians were on a quote unquote chitlin circuit. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Everybody in there. Come on, man. How much art was it going to be? Just Tracy, laugh. Tracy Morgan got it. It wasn't funny. It was with 12 sharks in it. What did they yeah, talk about yeah. the chitlin circuit? Tracy Morgan. Tracy Morgan. Leslie <laughs> Jones is still getting paid when she was riding around with Chitlin's Han Solo. Keep it, brother. 
<laughs> make yeah, money with so, your own. Make it. Yeah, we keep it working. Exactly. At the Black Panther, we can't go backwards. That's true. That's right, We can't go back to that. That was right. bro, yeah, yeah, yeah. that was a Tyler Perry movie on steroids. Yeah. And wow. I, I can't I can't do it. I can't I'm not gonna let it slide. I can't do it. It's on it's on steroids. I can't. I don't think we needed only thing we need was a, a fish fry, a trip to Atlantic City, and we got a Tyler so, Perry movie playing. Okay. That was, that was so D, D, are you throwing it into the same category as Soul Plane? No, no, no. no. Oh, whoa, okay. whoa. I need to say oh. that. Now, wait, wait. Oh, whoa. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> okay. All right, but let me say this. I'm just making sure. This was my concern. Oh, this no. movie that should not be said, right? This was my concern yeah. going we in. We don't speak of soul playing, bro. Word. I felt like this going in, and again, I didn't see it. So I'm saying like this. I'm just based on the reviews, what I'm hearing. All right. Going in, I thought part of the brilliance of coming to America was the fact that it was in America primarily. I thought the fact that New York was almost a character in the script. What this looks like from what I've read and heard that the majority of this is not in America. And I think right. that's one issue. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's at Rick Ross's house or whatever the case is. He it's was in it. Was that mother, Rick Ross, Rick Ross was in it. They was using his house. They was using right. his house. Wow. Oh. <laughs> well, let me, let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. If the first one didn't exist and this was the first one, no, no, no. no. Line, you it can't say that. that. I know you that, but I'm not saying that. You know, it could, but would it still be a classic? Come on, Come on bro. Fly. You can't even put. You can't even go there. It nah. was like it's, it, beca- it exists because of the first one. Like you can't. Yeah, you know I, I, agree, I agree. I was trying to, be, I was <laughs> no. trying to stretch it, but still. <laughs> This is above soul plane, though. So don't I won't go that bad. Everything okay. is above soul plane. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. Podcast is above soul plane. <laughs> right? The jailhouse <laughs> plays TV dinner last night was above. Yeah. Soul. The, the, the jailhouse <laughs> plays chicken wing was in is above this. Shit, so, By yeah. the way, let's take a moment just to recognize how proud I am of my nephew. I just want to take a look at the bottom of the screen. Think it say proud boys. Or something. that up. Look proud. Go ahead. And speaking of proud, right? Like. Parents always would be proud during parent teaching night. Now, not I, my, I work not, mine. <laughs> not your parents. Not mine. <laughs> and parent teaching night has changed over the years. Like I worked, like I said, I worked in schools and we had to trick parents to come in. But it's just two different things. And I'm gonna get on my people and people might get that might get upset with me. I worked at two different kinds of schools. One school was a little bit more mixed. Parent teaching night was always flooded. The other school for more reflected black and Latino kids, it was a little different. I could get say 30 parents in the other school might get four until we had to trick them a little bit and we added having food and games and prizes and that brought the parents in. And it's sad to say because some need have needs and stuff like that. But parent teaching night back in the day, man. Guys, no. if y'all want to speak, I'll let y'all take it first. It was big Listen, in my house. It was, it was big. big. <laughs> um, it was big in my house. My parents used to get dressed. My parents mm. would get dressed. And now this is the difference. I want to know with you guys. My parents would not take my sister or I with them. My right. parents would go by themselves. I understand yeah. a lot of parents would take the kid with them. So, you know, I don't know. Where do you guys stand on that? I never went with my parents. They would go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I think I yeah. think I went to one parent teacher. With my, I think my mother went. But my parents worked bugged out hours. So they looked at the report card and said, you right, send you back. That was it. But I would think my mother went to one or two. In high school, my mother got called up because the Spanish teacher didn't like me. She was a real racist bastard. Hope she oh, burns God. in hell. Hope she's dead and burning in hell right now. Wow. wow. Hey, no, 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 no. I mean, no, come no, on, no. D. Up that, up that, that. Her, she scarred me. Wow. Maybe who I am now. I'm fucked up now. I can't speak Spanish still. <laughs> hey, listen. Let me tell you something. I used to live in fear of parent teacher night, man. Like, I was the worst student, man. And I, up until about maybe ninth grade. And when I hit high school, you know, I'm, I was rough, man. It, it got kind of ugly, man. I used to live in fear, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Because that you you already know. See, Rodney, we're gonna talk about <laughs> Rodney's yeah, yeah. master. <laughs> so, but you yeah. know, but no, I'm serious, man. You know how it is, man. You're just like, oh Lord, what are they gonna say? You start thinking about all the stuff you're gonna that you missed, all the homework you missed, all the tests and everything that you didn't talk about. Hey Derek, how you doing? Was well, school is like, yeah, everything's fine, everything's fine. Yeah, I did all my homework. Yeah, I did all my homework. You're about to find about everything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you're about to get caught out there. I can remember, yeah. man, just being on. Now, did you, Miko said have parents dressed up? Did your parents dress up, or how did your parents come? You back? know what? I don't even Freaking remember all that. I just remember that ass whooping coming back home, man. You know what I mean? And that punishment. See, I shouldn't that- say they beat me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I got a man. I got I got hella punishments. I got a couple one or two ass whoopings, man. Too behind that. Man. No, mm-hmm. I got. I used to get some serious ass whippings, and I'm gonna tell you something else. 
parents teacher conference was a nightmare for me too, Derek. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. I, yeah. I, I wasn't I wasn't the greatest student all the time. I basically had to get myself together to basically later in my school career. But yeah, tar- parents teachers conference was a nightmare to me. I I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna confess something tonight on this show for the first time. Uh oh. All right. Uh-oh. Yeah. This and this is a true story. True story. I went to I went to elementary school with Stephen A. Smith. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, yeah, I know. yeah, from 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 we lived in the same neighborhood and we went to the same elementary school and we were in the same class, right? Now, at one period, I was a, a good student. I was like an A and B student. And then the reason why I was getting good grades is because I used to cheat off Stephen A. Smith. <laughs> and I a true he was like, a good student. Wow. I remember, no, I remember no, he told me that. I remember he told no, me that. No, true. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. This is the truth. Stephen A. Smith was a smart kid in school because I think his parents were educators as well. But I used to cheat off Stephen A. Smith for like about, I'm going to say about two years. So then all of a sudden, they had the nerve to start SP classes. And move Stephen A. Smith out of my class. <laughs> it out there. <laughs> Yo, wait, it doesn't end Hold there. On. My grades hit the fucking floor when Stephen A. <laughs> left. So all of a sudden, Terrence, parents' teacher conference comes up. I you know, I was raised by my grandmother. My grandmother comes up there, they say, Oh, little Rodney's doing so poorly in class. He was such a good student. We don't even know what happened. And I'm sitting there like, yeah, you took Stephen A. Smith out of my class. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> so my grades just started plummeting. They wanted to know if I was having problems at home. How did I go from this to that? Yo, it was crazy. So then my grandmother's answer was, I know what the problem is. I'm going to whip that ass when I get home. <laughs> yo, yo, that like, was yo, the problem. Yo, my man Tiger, right? He said uh, when your parents pay for pay for you to go to school, the ass yeah. whoopers hit. Hit different. That's it that, hit different. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's that Catholic yeah. school whooping ass. Oh, yo, <laughs> I'm telling you, I used that's to get, true. I used to get some serious. I used to get some major ass whooping. Yo, my 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 grandmother had a holster for her fucking belt. Oh, let's talk yeah. about let's talk about ass whoopers. Let me hear what y'all got to say about. All right, first of all, let's <laughs> let me let me say this. Okay, first of all, everybody, we about to get into this this beating discussion. Okay, and so Uh-oh. so you know, let's chop it up. The crew, cast, producer. We don't endorse people beating children, all right? So before we even start, let everybody know. We're just telling you history, how yeah. we came up, okay? So now we have an issue that has been brewing for a couple of weeks. Rodney is under the impression that his grandmother was more of a disciplinarian with that belt than my mother was, which is saying that 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 somebody is better than Ali at boxing. It's saying that yeah. somebody's better than Jordan <laughs> at basketball. My mother... So, Rodney, what I'm going to do before I give you the floor, I'm okay. going to lay out 10 of my mother's credentials, okay? <laughs> okay. I, I looked at the stats, okay? And this is according to CompuBeat, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, okay, one, my mother was inducted to the World Beating Hall of Fame first ballot, unanimous decision. <laughs> no, okay. Two, my mother was an eight-time Golden Belt Award winner. <laughs> Golden Belt. <laughs> Number three. <laughs> My mother designed and secured a patent for a more aerodynamic, aerodynamic, <laughs> environmentally friendly belt with traction. She changed the whole beating mm-hmm, era. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Number four, my mother was a consultant and choreographer for all the beating scenes during the filming of Roots. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> my, my mother, number five, my mother was the first to handle the belt with either hand. She could cross over. People wasn't doing that back then. People wasn't like doing that. All right? My mother was the first six. My mother was the first to beat two kids at one time and still be on a landline and they didn't know. Number seven. My mother was the keynote speaker in the World International Beating Conference back in 1982. Number eight. My mother published and wrote a book entitled Didn't I Tell You to Come In Before No Street Lights Was On? <laughs> number, number nine. Number nine. The Bloods and the Crips were going to 
give my mother an honorary status in the game. They go out and beat somebody and say she was too violent for their branch. <laughs> and then the last thing was my mother was the first one. Remember all these parents used to have to try to find the belt? My mother was the first one to actually put a belt in a, a glass case that said break in case of emergency. <laughs> My mother changed the game. So I just want you to know what you're up against, Rod. Right? <laughs> so that's Yo, classic, man. Calvin, oh, man. Kelvin, that was classic. I that thought was that was classic. I was that, that was, was really cute. That, you know uh -oh. what I'm saying? That was uh -oh. really cute. That was really cute. And the thing oh, is, God. if if my grandmother was here, and let me give you a little background. My grandmother, wait, wait, I was wait, raised I by my. About the beatings. Oh my gosh! Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm sweating and laughing. That's the best. Yo, funny, man. Oh, man. Yeah, like I said, if my grandmother was here, God bless her soul, she would have thought that was cute, Calvin. She really would have thought that was cute. <laughs> oh, like, but cute. I'm gonna tell I'm gonna tell you guys about a beating that I got. Now I was let me give you a little backdrop. First of all, I was raised in a household with my grandmother, my grand aunt. And my aunt, my mother's daughters, mostly, till before my my uh, grandfather passed away. So the thing is, they would have competition with each other to see who can whip our ass the most. <laughs> now, I'm a, I remember this just one tragic beating. Now, I got beatings where, you know, I used to pass out during the beating. <laughs> They would start beating me, and I would literally pass out. And I used to think that it was because I was light skinned and my nerves were bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but they, they, they had my 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 grandmother and aunt was surgical with the belt. They were surgical with the belt. Now let me just go into the story. I'm in Tom McCann's one day. I know I'm sure Tom my McCann's. Age. God, Tom McCann's as a child <laughs> with my aunt. So we're going in there to get shoes one day. Now this you gotta realize this is it's, this is a public setting. We go into the store to get shoes. They didn't have my size, and I decided to throw a fit. For those that don't know what a fit is, that is a breakdown with a child. Okay, you was acting like a little white kid. That's a yeah, white I was, child. I threw, I threw a, I threw a, I threw a fit. Mimicking a little white kid in the store. Then I threw Ooh. a fit one <laughs> time. One time. My aunt decided that she was going to take the belt out and whip my ass right in the vestibule of Tom McCann. <laughs> so now she's going to work. She's, she's starting to go to work on me right in the vestibule of Tom McCann. I remember the beating starting, but I don't remember the beating ending because I passed out. <laughs> I passed out and I woke up in the back of the car. <laughs> and all I could see was the ceiling of the car and the back of their heads in the front of the car. And here my grandmother said, did you see how he acted up? Girl, you wore his ass out. I was about to get out and help you, but I saw you had that shit under control. And I'm laying in the back and I'm listening to them brag about the beating, not seeing if I'm okay or nothing. Now remember, I'm light-skinned. I got bad nerves. I can't take long beatings. <laughs> And they proceeded to drive my ass home with me still passed out in the back. Uh, now you top that, Kelvin. You okay, all right. That. So, so what I'm gonna do is this. This is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go to. All right, I gotta do an honorable mention. This is the okay. craziest thing because. All right. So I did the worst thing that you can do. I'm gonna give you two beating stories. You go. I'm gonna give one. You do one next, and I'll do another one. All, all right, right. So. All right. Okay. All so right. I did the worst thing that you can do in life. I stole from my mother. Okay. The worst thing you that should, you, can you do should in your life. see. That's how I know you're you gonna lose this you already because I would have been dead. Yeah, I would have yeah, been I dead. <laughs> so, I wouldn't so even this be is, here. This is what happened. This is and I, and when I say steal, it's on the technicality. This is what happened. Mm. So we're in the car one day, right? And my mother is counting out her. She just cashed a check, so she's counting the money. And it was one of those old school cars where you know um, there was like not really a divider in the, in the console, so you know I can kind of see her feet. She can see my feet, you know, goes crazy, you know, straight across. So my mother's cutting the money out. $20 falls over by my foot. So I'd never seen that amount of money before, especially mm -hmm. when I can, you know, it's accessible. So I just figure I redeem myself <laughs> by putting it in my pocket. All right. Mm -hmm. So I take them. Matter of fact, back then I put it in my tube sock. You know what I'm saying? So I, I take the $20 and my mother's saying, I'm like, my mother's sitting there like I'm missing $20. Like, I know they gave me the right amount of money. I'm missing $20. So um, my, what my, my sister's godfather had come to the house, and he had given my sister the day before $20, and he gave me $5. Now, the mistake I made, aside from stealing that money, was 
I forgot that whenever they gave your, whenever somebody gave your children some money, they would tell you how much they gave. So they had a game at Play World in the Sunrise Mall in Massapequa called the Rally. And there was this thing where you could knock the dominoes down and they'd do all these tricks. If any of you guys remember that. So it was $17.95 mm-hmm. at Play World. Now I had the $5 my sister's godfather gave me, and now I got $20. I got enough to buy Domino Rally. I go buy the game, and when I bring the game back, my mom was like, where'd you get that game from? Because, you know, back in the day, nothing could come in that house unless they knew where it came from. Yeah. So I was like, oh, um, my sister godfather gave it to me. My mother picks up the phone like she about to call him. I was like, never mind. I just threw myself at the mercy of the court right there. I just knew <laughs> I'm not going to make her pay for, for, for a call, too, after losing that $20. Now, this is the difference, Rodney, between my mother and some of the less seasoned mothers around here. Okay. <laughs> a, lot of the, a lot of these mothers beat you when they're angry. My yeah. mother didn't have to beat you when she was angry. Uh-oh. She beat you because you deserved to get beat. So what my <laughs> mother did was there was no spontaneous combustion. I know I'm in trouble. I try to disappear and go outside and play with the dog. My mother cleaned the house. My mother put dinner on. My mother did everything you could possibly do until my sister, two hours later, comes in the backyard and says those inevitable words, mommy wants you. And <laughs> so if you ever saw the movie Green Mile, when, the, when they would walk to the electric chair, very, yeah, very yeah. similar in this case. So I'm walking uh, into the house singing Negro spirituals and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> what happened after that? was one of the greatest beatings that ever happened in history. You can actually rent it on, um, they used to have it at Blockbuster. You actually can see, because they had like a behind the scenes and making it a beat and stuff like that. When I make tell you, my you mother beat, 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 the woman beat the fireworks out of me. I was light skinned for about three days after that beat. And I think what it was, was the worst thing is you when you get beat, when you either scare your parent or you really hurt them. And my mother was hurt. I wanted for nothing. I was a kid that had just about everything at the time, and my mother beat me. And there's some days now when the wind blows a certain way, I can still feel it. So yeah. that that was one of the that was one <laughs> that was one of the worst beatings because, like you said, the the precision, the handling, the accuracy. Much like Mayweather, my mother didn't waste a, a swat. Like she would connect. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like some people miss and swing. No, my mother was she was so accurate. The efficiency was just there. So mm-hmm. so that beating right now. Um, she almost beat me into law enforcement. See, you. <laughs> <laughs> so you give me one more. Then I'm going to give you one. I'm going to give you an honorable mention. Go ahead. All right. Here we go. Oh, first of all, I want to back up on my story, too. I couldn't walk past a Tom McCann until I was 37. <laughs> That's number one. Right. Number two. Right. And um, here we go. Now, my grandmother would basically always be watching us even when you didn't know you were being watched you know what i'm saying like we'd be out in the front playing because back in the day you know people watch their kids and stuff so we i don't know if you guys remember those old picnic tables that used to have the x legs yep. they were made yeah. of wood or whatever yes yes, so we, yes everybody had them in their backyard and they used to come with the benches that had yep. the x legs too yeah yep. so we had a picnic table the picnic table broke and one side of the um picnic table's legs broke off so now we had one side with the picnic table legs on and the other side, no. So now it looks like a ramp. So I decide to move this picnic table in the driveway so I could jump it with my bike. Mm. Now, not realizing that my grandmother could be watching this. <laughs> so I go to the end of the driveway, ride up to the to picnic table, ride up the picnic table and stop right on the picnic table and um, didn't jump. Go back, build up some more courage, try it again. Still didn't jump. On the third one, I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I ride up the driveway. I hit the picnic table. I changed my mind right at the end. The front wheel goes off of the picnic table. The bike flips over to on me, busts my head down on the concrete. I'm all laying in the dirt. I'm, I'm pretty much knocked almost senseless. And then I hear a voice that says, I would have never thought you would have built up the courage to do that. <laughs> now get your dumb ass in the house because I'm about to tear it up. <laughs> and, now, and you're concussed? And you're concussed. I'm concussed. <laughs> I'm concussed. So now I come in the house. She tears me up, whips me from floor to bottom, and then tells me to go to bed one o'clock in the afternoon. 
Oh, the throws, worst. Throws my whole the sweet worst. pattern off for the whole night, and I'm concussed. <laughs> wow. You chop that, Calvin. Okay, so you this I gotta that. make. I gotta mostly. make. I gotta make a tag. I gotta. I gotta do this because it'd be, you know, it'd be unfair. So my father, who did not believe in hitting children. I never my got father, beat. I never got beat. My father, which you was wrong for D. I got <laughs> I got beat for stuff D did and I didn't even know. Him. Okay. So 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 my father didn't believe in beating children. My father would just talk to you and make you cry. He'd never beat us until he changed his ideology. And this is just because I didn't realize that there's a transference of power when they're married, right? And so, <laughs> so when I was a kid. The most important thing in my life when me and my boy, we six years old, when we discovered two things that changed our lives, Playboy books and a book of matches. Oh, and those man. two things were the most important thing in our lives, okay? Yeah, I remember so, those so, yeah. so me and my boy, we outside, right? And we just learned how to strike matches, right? And we couldn't do it with the one hand. You had to bend the, the book. And, and, yeah. And you know what I'm saying? Yep. Right, right. So we outside, and we're setting grass on fire. Now, picture Ooh. this summer day. We're in Massapequa with this summer day. My mother and all the, the, the ladies are getting their hair done at a lady's house down the street. It's like 15 mothers in the neighborhood getting their hair done. In front of that house, the girls are all outside playing double dutch. So you, you get the whole picture here. Everybody's out. My boy and myself, we go back to my house behind since everybody was down at the other house, we go behind, he, they was at his grandma's house, we go behind my house in the backyard and we start striking matches and lighting the grass on fire. The problem is the grass doesn't burn because every wet. time we would strike yeah. a match, it's wet or the wind would blow it out. So I come up with this brilliant idea. Let's go in the garage. This way there won't be any wind. Brilliant <laughs> idea. Get in the garage. We take some magazines and we burn it. But the only problem was only the corner would burn and then it would fizzle out. So now I'm saying to myself, I see these bottles filled with stuff, right? And I know my father would use them periodically. Now, I've never seen, I've never seen the word kerosene before. And I couldn't pronounce it. I don't know what it is. But a pen, to me, it looked like if we use that, maybe if we pour that on the books, this the kerosene, you know, substance, maybe you, that'll help the fire are you, burn. Are you sure it's kerosene? <laughs> so we take the kerosene and open it and pour it out on the books. I strike that match and kaboom, like magic, black smoke everywhere. <laughs> now we are panicking, okay? Because the garage is on fire inside the garage. <laughs> so my boy starts yelling fire. I'm like, shut up. You're going to get us in trouble. So I Close the garage so nobody knows that this is going to be a fire. <laughs> he opens the garage. I'm like, stop. You're going to get us in trouble. I close it. Now we send the smoke signals across <laughs> the neighborhood. Right? Somebody now on, on Long Island, there's nothing but volunteer firefighters. That's it. All of a sudden, my boy, as we close and open the garage, his shoe catches on fire and his hair catches on fire. <laughs> now he take off running down the street looking like a lit match, okay? So he running toward his grandmother's house where all the women are at. Yeah. I go inside and get a cup of water and throw it on the fire. That just helped it. Next minute, all of the women, my mother and everybody, they're like, your house is on fire. Here come my mother and 15 women with rollers and stuff in their hair running down toward the house. All the firefighters that live in the neighborhood, now they're outside in my front yard. Opening and closing the garage so much, my father, who had been working nights, wakes up here in the garage, opens close, <laughs> he comes outside. Now there's fire trucks. There's basically 300 people in the front yard. Fire department, my father comes outside. He arguing with the fire department because he's like, I'm putting it out with my hose. I ain't chopping up my garage. This that third. <laughs> After all that said and done, my father, who was six foot three, 300 pounds, Six three, three hundred pounds. Oh, I remember him doing this. That's all I remember. <laughs> the next thing I remember is tonight doing this podcast. I don't remember nothing else. I don't remember nothing else. I don't remember nothing else. The, last, the last 40, 40 years was a blur. Yo, I tell I'm you, you. When I was, so I'm watching him take the belt off. And I mean he's he's 300 pounds, so it just keeps going. <laughs> 
tell you, my father mm. beat the fool out of me. And I'm saying, how did he learn this? How did he get this good? All the beatings I got, this was the Super Bowl of beatings. Yeah. And I'm, tell I'm telling you, I'm in therapy over that beating right now. So I, I, I would be remiss, even though my mother, much like your grandmother, was from South Carolina with yeah. me, started at. Yeah. I would just say my father did catch up. So, Rodney, I, I will respect you as an opponent. I will let this go as a tie because if your grandmother's from South Carolina, then she knows what she's doing with that belt. So, we yeah. have to have, we have, out of respect to my late mother, we have to have a tie. I can't let nobody, you know, pass her. So, as gentlemen, we have yeah. a gentleman handshake and we will tie. So, Rodney, thank you. Thank you, Kelvin, bravo, Kelvin, bravo, Kelvin, oh, bravo. Thank you, bravo, Kelvin. Thank you. Oh, my yeah, God, yo, these, yeah. these stories, these are classic <laughs> and classic. And, and, and listen, my man, you want to get a beat now. He's like, <laughs> <laughs> But, yo, at least we both know how to act, though, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 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 It, it, built, it built structure in us, too. It did, know? it did. It, and and yeah. the doctor said after the skin graft came back, it's yeah. almost like you don't even yeah, see it. yeah, yeah. That's why I always wear long sleeve. I still got the scars from it. You know, you know, you know what the funny. You want to hear some funny something, something, something funny? My grandmother thank you, told Nicole, me. Thank you for tuning in too. Yeah, thank she gave she gave me a beating one time, right? From something I did in school. I don't even remember what I did. And then I remember she told me the next day. She said, "You know, I know I whipped your ass good because when I put the covers on you, you were still moaning." <laughs> That's what she told me. She said it hurt to put the covers on you last night. You still was moaning. <laughs> oh man. Oh man. No, oh, man. Y'all listen, y'all cracked me up. Y'all made my night with those those stories. That made the night. That was a funny. Was funny. Yeah, they right. need to bring they need to bring them beans back, man. Yeah, Did yeah. Y'all ever armor up, man? Anybody ever think to armor up? Put some newspaper in there or something? Oh, no, 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 brother. You, you just gonna delay the inevitable, bro. No, no. Then they, <laughs> gonna have that. then they gonna make you take the bath and beat you wet. I so yeah. I, I, <laughs> yo, I, had, I, I had to get down to my underwear one time and got a yeah, beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. ran out in the snow once. Yo, <laughs> I just said, no, I had to fight another day. I'm sorry. Like I said, school was my issue. I got a beating one time in my underwear. She beat me and then took a break. Came back and finished beating. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was like half time on the beat. Like, oh, so on the the over. Oh, yeah, she could smoke. No, she 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 took the break because she was tired. She had to take a break. <laughs> Threw my arm out. Got, yeah. had to get Tommy John yeah. surgery. Yeah. Yo, yeah. you know what? I'm gonna tell you something though. I think that's why I don't smoke today because I will mm. not let a match. Yeah. And I just be real. I, let me tell you something. I went out on tour. Was Smokey the Bear when he was like, "Only you can prevent forest fires." I was right by him, like, "That's true." That <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, but um, God bless oh, my, my grandmother soul. God yeah. bless my aunt yeah. soul. You know, I'm what I'm saying. Yeah, they kept, my, aunt, my yeah. aunts, they always yeah. kept me in check, and they made me the man I am today. That's right. That's yeah, right. Man. Kept you from the street. That's it. Yeah, that's yeah, it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. You was more fair to that than, fit, than any gangster in the street. I was like, and the most important thing right. was right. it was done in love. See, that's why it's not abuse. It was done in love. That's correct. The correct. Correct. It, done, correct. it wasn't meant to hurt you. It was to deter you from Me. all the crap you could have been. I could have been killed. You right. In that fire. You're right. You're right. Up kerosene. You know right, what I'm saying? Yeah, they yeah, they, they yeah. did it. They do it. They did it because they knew what was out there waiting for you. No doubt. Yeah. No yeah, yeah. Yeah. Peace, Damien. What's going yeah, on? Peace. Brother? Yeah, man. So with that said, brothers, man, this is a good show tonight, man. That's the that good. Ended on a funny note, and like uh, like Kevin said, we don't condone. Uh, children get beat, but these are some funny ass, <laughs> ass stories. We got beat for y'all. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got beat for all the kids of the 2021, all these you no know, different kids. But yeah, listen, guys, I love this show, man. Love tonight. I just, just had a us. flashback <laughs> about a beating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Let me see get get a beating on beat. <laughs> <Get a> beat. <laughs> Yo, guys, I love y'all, man. Jamie, take us out, man. Peace. See y'all next week. All right, y'all. See y'all next week. All right. Week. All right.